in my dreams it's not the same for I I am the same a million voices sing my name Don't Hashim Modamani survived. He made it to Germany. And last week, Sean, who wrote and sang that song, met him in Berlin. And together with David and Michael from the Young'uns, they sang him Dark Water. History has always been shaped by the crossing of oceans by desperate people. Travel Britain today, you can hear stories of exile and migration in every town. On the very same boat as Henry and Susanna were nine convicts from the Assizes here in Shrewsbury. The youngest of them was John Bennett. He was described as a young man but an old rogue. And within four months of arriving in Botany Bay, he was hanged for stealing food. He wasn't yet 20. Thomas Stretch was a miller from Shrewsbury. He was on that boat as well. He was there going for seven years. And his crime? He'd stolen goods worth three shillings. He was hardly a hardened criminal. One of the most noted transported convicts from Shrewsbury was the wonderful Molly Morgan. She arrived on the second fleet in 1790. She survived a horrific passage in which one third of the convicts on her boat died. As soon as she arrived, she tried to escape. She succeeded. She made it back to Britain, but then was arrested again and again was sentenced to be transported back to Australia, where this time she served her term. And when it was finished, she became a farmer. She ran in. She became one of the wealthiest landowners in the Hunter Valley. She funded schools. She funded hospitals. She made good. People go. People come. Parallel lives. An 11-year-old boy and his mother crouch beside some other refugees in a boat as it approaches Harwich. They've escaped horror in their homeland. They now seek sanct sanctuary in Britain. They've been lucky. A couple of school teachers in Carnarvon answered an advertisement in The Guardian and vouchsafed their passage to Britain. But the father of the family could not come. And when they arrive, they are separated. The mother to go and work, the boy to Carnarvon. The year is 1938. They're Austrian Jews. The boy is so traumatized, they must remove the whistle from the kettle. It reminds him of the police rounding people up in the Vienna ghetto. The next year, they get lucky. The father comes over. It's March 1939 now. And he finds work here in Shrewsbury at the Silhouette Corset Factory, a factory built by refugees, German Jews, who'd been forced out of business in Germany. They'd come to London to set up business again. But again, they were forced out by the Nazis, this time their bombs, and they came here to Shrewsbury. They became some of the main employers in the town. And Silhouette became one of the famous, most famous underwear and swimwear firms in Britain. And a steady stream of refugees made their way here, worked in the factory, and then lived their whole lives in this town. People come, people go. One of the things that Hesham said to Sean when they were in Berlin last week was, I may be a refugee, but I am not defined by it. I am something more than that. Think of that. Think also, think of the trauma that you feel when you lose a loved one. Most of us will have had that feeling. It cuts us in two. 
Now multiply that feeling for losing several, many loved ones, neighbors, friends. Add to it the horror of seeing people die around you, people you know, people you don't know. Blend in the constant fear of not knowing where your home would be. And then imagine the level of trauma being harbored within somebody who arrives here, a relatively peaceful country, where of course having jumped these hoops is now expected to be a good refugee. Fortunately, there are many good organizations working to help people who arrive. In every town where we perform the show, we partner with a local organization as part of our Parallel Lives program. Here, we're delighted to partner with a wonderful organization called Shropshire Supports Refugees. Look out for them, they do good work. <laughs> History has always been shaped by the crossing of oceans by desperate people. Yes, such migration is rooted in pain. Yes, it can bring disbalance where it lands. But it also brings nutrients like youth and energy, essential for aging societies like ours. And whether people like it or not, it is inevitable. Yet in the White House, we have a violent demagogue who shuns the vulnerable, a germaphobe who fears contagion by anything that's strange to him. Here in Europe, borders are closing faster than at any time since the 1930s. Fear is winning. What can we do? Maybe by telling stories, by putting a face on migration, by showing how our own past is shaped by such transit, then maybe, just maybe, we can help to detoxify this debate. And talking of stories, it's now time to return to Henry and Susanna. And it's time for us to meet our hero. They've, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs>